Trong chuyên mục kỳ này, chúng tôi muốn bàn đến một ngành học mới. Dù nhu cầu đã có từ lâu nhưng nói về đào tạo bài bản, thì Việt Nam chúng ta vẫn chưa thực sự có một ngành học toàn diện đáp ứng nhu cầu của nền kinh tế. Đó là ngành công nghệ kiến trúc và quản lý xây dựng. Kể từ tháng 9 năm 2016, Đại học Kiến trúc Thành phố Hồ Chí Minh đã phối hợp với Đại học Bắc Đan Mạch thực hiện chương trình đào tạo bậc đại học với ngành này. Và để hiểu rõ hơn, chúng tôi đã mời đến trường quay ông René Martin Larsen, giám đốc khu vực châu Á Đại học Bắc Đan Mạch. Good evening, Mr. Larsen, and thank you for coming here with us today. So for the first questions, um, was it your, will you give some information or your opinions about the labor demanding for ATCM professions? If you look at Vietnam, there's almost 90 million people and there's a yearly growth of almost 1 million people in Vietnam. Yeah. That actually makes Vietnam one of the fastest growing countries in the world. But it also means that there's a big need of residential buildings, offices, schools, hospitals. So there's a big need for professionals, professionals within the construction industry. And also looking at the big development projects here in Vietnam, projects like these demand very high skilled people. That combined with our analyzers, our dialogues with companies and organizations throughout Asia, especially here in Vietnam, we can see that the ATCM yeah. graduates uh, can have really big success here in Vietnam. In digital world, technologies is the basic factors of the development of all the sectors, but architects is a distinctive sector. So uh, what role do you think that technologies plays in uh, development of their architect profession? If you look at other th sectors, they adapt and implement technology very rapidly. Yes. But the construction industry have been a bit conservative and rejected new technology. But what we can see is that pushing boundaries is the core vision of architects because they all want to create the next big, beautiful building. But to do that in the complexity that the construction industry faces today, they need really good technology to support the design process and also the construction of the building. What the companies are looking for when we talk about technology is people with skills that can operate PCs with extensive and complex technology to make the design really, really good. And that is also one of the core competences of the ATCM graduates. Yeah, and come back to the ATCM program. So what will the student learn in this program? Well, of course, they learn all about construction, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's hospitals, whether it's small projects or large scale development projects. Uh, they learn it all, but they also learn about the supportive activities such as finance, management, insurance, production of yeah. construction materials. But some of the main focus we have in the, in the education is also personal skills, because that is what the companies want uh, from the students. So one of the things, one of the skills that we teach the students is, is to be a good team member, in a high performance international team. And the second one is to be creative, innovative, problem solving, yeah. whatever the problem is. And the last one is that we want to teach them to be able to adapt new knowledge by themselves. So that when they finish the ATCM program, they have the capability and the competences to actually keep themselves updated and yeah. implement new knowledge into their work. So in order for the student to take the best, uh, the best advantages of what they have given, um, what the requirement that you need from them? Well, if, if students want to succeed at the ATCM program, they need to uh, focus on their English skills, but also their personal skills. And you also need to have an aisle at 6.0 with sub skills at 5.5. There is a lot of students in Vietnam that don't have this skill set. So we created what we call a foundation year, where the students can, uh, can get these skills. 
Yes, and I'm really curious that in four and a half years, will the students of the ATCM programs learn full-time in Vietnam or they can study abroad in North Denmark? Yeah, that is what we are working on because we want to make it really, really flexible. We know that there's a lot of Vietnamese students who want to study abroad, but it's also very, very expensive. Yeah. So we're trying to build in the flexibility in the ATCM program that the students, they can choose to go to Denmark for one semester or two semester. But the fact is that we actually also have a lot of Danish students that would love to go to Vietnam oh. to do a semester. So by, by making it flexible, we create a lot of opportunities, not just for the Vietnamese students, but also for the Danish, and create this international study environment. Last but not least, um, do you have some advice for the students uh, to develop their career after they graduate from the ATCM program? When they develop their career, you can see it as two ways. There's an academic way. Yeah. The bachelor degree from UCN and University of Architecture give them uh, the competences to continue to master degree on whatever university. They can go to PhD and postdoc. That's the academic way. But there's also another way, uh, and that's the working experience way, by gaining working experience after their education. But I do think that my, my best advice to any student at any university is to adapt the mindset of lifelong learning. Yeah. And the reason I say this is that Many students, when they finish their program, when they finish their bachelor degree or master degree, they believe, now I'm finished studying. I don't have to learn anymore. Yeah. But that is wrong. We always put into changes, into new knowledge, into new technology, and we have to be willing to learn. And if we don't do that, we will be outdated very quickly. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you for all the useful information. Thank you for coming here. Thank you.